Okay, so after watching this video, you will be able to make this final animation. This video is sponsored by Wingfox, but more of this soon in the video. And you will get the project file, link is in the description. So first thing first, let's start by searching some references of old lantern on Google, Pinterest and Artstation and paste it on a free software called PureF. So in Blender, let's add in a reference image of a lantern uh, which I found on Google. And now I will start to trace it with a cylinder. Uh, there is no complex modeling included while modeling a lantern, just some simple bevels and extrusions are needed. Also I will model the top part separately as it is very hard to model them as one single object. And it does not even seem connected. By the way if you have a lantern like this at home, I would highly recommend using it as a reference and it will be way easier to model if it's in front of you. Then just delete the unnecessary faces on the bottom and then let's add some bevels because except a blade no object is that sharp. Now let's select the faces of the glass and then press P to separate and select selection. So now it is a separate object. Now let's model the inside of the lamp and for that I have watched an unboxing video of a lamp similar to this to know the insides. Link of the video in the description. So let's select this edge loop and then press F to fill the face and now keep on extruding. Now you can see after closing the lamp there are two semi sphere shapes that are protecting the wick. So for that just take a UV sphere and split it in two halves and place it as it is and then delete the upper faces if there are any. Now for the slit of the wick, just use a knife tool to cut a rectangle and I am not preserving topology here because it doesn't matter here at the insides. Now let's create the iron sidings. So add a bezier curve and trace it along the shape and if it's messed up, in the side view just select all the points and then press S and then press the axis button, in my case it's Y and then press 0. Then in the curve properties go to geometry and under bevel increase the depth value. And then let's set the bevel to profile. So now we are already getting a similar shape. So I will tweak it just a little bit. Then add a mirror modifier to it and select the mirror object as glass to mirror it on the other side. Now add in a busier curve again and this time we will make the small wires. So just trace it and just increase the depth value and a mirror modifier to this one also. Now same for this wire which rotates the oil lamp. Now let's create the extrusion from the side metals. So just select the faces on the top and then extrude them and then add 4 loop cuts and then select the middle faces and then right click and select bridge faces. Then to add more smoothness just add a subdivision surface modifier. Then use the same bezier curve method for the support wire and the hanging wire. Just keep on extruding until it wraps around the hole. Now to create the oil cap just add a simple cylinder and with some simple loop cuts and bevel just create the overall shape. And I think this process is pretty self explanatory. Now I will convert every curve into mesh. So just press F3 and search for convert mesh. Now to create holes on the top just add in mini cylinders and place them exactly as the reference and move them to a separate collection by pressing M and I will call it as bulls. And then select the top and let's add in a boolean modifier and set the operand to collection and the type to difference and then hide the bulls collection to check if it is working or not and then apply the modifier and then delete if there are any remaining faces. But you should not delete your remaining skills that's why on Wingfox you can find many courses that can help you learn. Wingfox is a great place to learn professional skills and they have professional instructors and lecturers from around the world. They are not only our sponsors but I am their user too. Wingfox provides courses related to CG and VFX. 
गेम आर्ट आईटी एंड सॉफ्टवेयर ग्राफिक डिजाइन कॉन्सेप्ट डिजाइन एंड एनवायरमेंट डिजाइन यू कैन ऑल्सो फिल्टर कोर्सेज बाय योर लेवल दैट इज बिगिनर इंटरमीडिएट और एक्सपर्ट एंड बाय लैंग्वेज एंड बाय प्राइस यू कैन फाइंड मेनी ब्लेंडर कोर्सेज हियर फ्रॉम प्रोफेशनल आर्टिस्ट and the one i like here is this creating fantasy environments in blender and photoshop this course is by ricardo piuan and he will teach you on how to create fantasy environments in blender and photoshop this course will cover professional workflow for design strategies composition modeling creating the overall scene and finalizing the image in photoshop so link of the course in the video description so hope you are excited so get ready to learn with wing fox now let's duplicate the whole lantern and move it to a new collection called low poly and i will rename the existing collection as high poly now observe carefully what i am doing Now before we move on to sculpting I will add some uniform loop cuts to the whole model to keep the topology uniform or otherwise it will sculpt good on some areas and bad on some areas and also add a solidify modifier to the glass so that it will appear thick and same for the top and bottom so now let's select the bottom and add in a multi resolution modifier So currently I will set it to 3 but I might increase it later. So let's start by scraping some sharp edges. So select this scrape brush and drag it over the sharp edges and you will eventually see its effect. I recommend using a paint tablet for sculpting but it's not completely necessary. But again highly recommended. Now it's time to add some details so let's select the clay strip brush and with lower strength i will just hover around the corners and then use the smooth brush to smooth the shortcut for a smooth brush is holding shift and i am using the smooth brush with very low values fine so our lantern is made of iron so we need the fine grains of iron so let's create a new texture and set it to clouds and increase the size and you can also increase the depth to your liking and then select the normal draw brush and then go to its texture and then select the texture you have just made then set the mapping to view plane and set the stroke to anchor now with lower strength let's do it everywhere and now you can repeat the same process for rest of the other stuff so after you are done with sculpting go to object mode and increase the viewport subdivisions now you can unhide the low poly collection So now we are going to transfer the details of our high poly mesh to our low poly mesh. So you will unwrap the low poly mesh and if you don't know what is it then I recommend watching a tutorial on it. Now unhide both high poly and low poly objects and let's isolate the fuel caps first. So now duplicate the low poly cap and move it to a new collection called cage. and then go to edit mode and then press a to select all and then press alt s to scale along the normals and make sure it covers both the high poly and low poly objects this method is called normal baking and you can do it without cage objects but using a cage object create super accurate normal maps so now repeat the same process for every object and move them to the cage collection and to transfer the details you need to watch this video where i have covered everything to bake normals in blender and substance painter and in this video i will use substance painter but you can use blender also so i will export the low poly object and then i will export the high poly object and then i will export each cage object separately and then for the rest of the stuff you will find that in the video and also i will be doing texturing in substance painter uh, which is uh, very simple and more efficient than blender so now after baking the normals you can see our low poly mesh is looking just like our high poly mesh 
and which is a significant performance optimization okay so let's add in iron material to the bottom and a grunge map in the roughness and i will change the color to a bit of golden black and now let's add a layer with a simple brown material which will be all dirt so add a black mask and then add a generator and let's use the dirt generator now tweak the setting to get some cool results now let's do the same for the rust and instead of dirt i will use the metal edge wear generator here so now let's copy the same for the top and for the side steel and also for the fuel cap also and for the glass i added an opacity channel and some dirt at the bottom and that's texturing so let's export back everything to blender and also i will make the glass a bit more rough as it is an old lantern now i will append the lantern in a different blend file where i will create the whole scene so now on the internet i found that the height of our lantern is actually 19 cm so i scaled it down until the z scale is 19 cm now let's add in a cube to make a 10 by 10 feet room and with a ceiling height of 9 feet now for the windows go to units and set that to imperial and which is fit by default so add a loop cut from 3 feet from the ground and the second one 3 feet from the first one then add two more loop cuts to create the window and then extrude the faces outside now place your lantern near the window and then add in a camera and then decide your view and then you can press control alt and zero to set the camera to view then i will model just a simple window here then i use just a cube to make this table and now let's add some textures and for that i used a simple wood material with planks from ambient cg and applied it to the cube then i added loop cuts to the gaps and extruded them inside then again a simple wood material to the window frame and a glass bsdf to the glass then i plugged a noise texture in the roughness and tweaked the value with the color ramp then for the walls i added a concrete material now for the outdoor lighting let's add an hdr from polyheaven so i will use this when is dawn 2 and let's download it now in the world setting set it to environment texture and open the hdr you have just downloaded and then in the shader editor set it from object to world and select the hdr node and then press control t if you have node wrangler add on turn on and then rotate the hdr with the z value now i will install a free blender add on called blender kit in which you will find many free and premium assets so just install it and i will search for books and flowers and then a cup now to create the wick just use a simple bezier curve and increase the extrude and bevel depth values now let's create a simple flame with the uv sphere and some proportional editing and add a emissive material to it and i will set the value to 500 then add a subsurf modifier and a displace modifier and set it to clouds so now in the timeline we will animate this size value so on the first frame hover over the size and then press i to insert a keyframe and one on the last keyframe then change the timeline to graph editor and with the keyframe selected add a noise modifier and tweak the values as per your liking and i will also do the same for the displace modifier strength also now for the flame light you can use a point light but uh, it has this issue which is very hard to get rid of so instead of a point light i used a spotlight and which is best for this purpose so just set the color to a warm color and then increase the intensity so again i will use the noise modifier for the intensity of light and also the emission value of the flame Now I will create just a simple camera animation and I will also animate the depth of field focus distance. Then to create the natural handheld effect, I will use a noise modifier to the x and y position of the camera. And here's our final animation.
so that's it guys if you want to create a realistic barrel then you can click here